Here's an interesting knife, the Camelus MC1 Paratrooper Knife. Some of you guys will be very familiar with this knife. It was issued by the Army, Air Force, I think the Marines too, not too sure about the Marines, but anybody who bailed out of a plane using a parachute had a need for this knife, according to the military. Uh, if you were a down pilot in the Air Force, you carried it with you in your flight suit perhaps. Some units would actually attach it to the parachute itself. That was rare though. And the whole idea was it would give you an ability to cut yourself out of entanglement with the shroud lines of the chute. And the way they would do that is primarily first with the hook cutter. And there's your hook cutter. Oddly not automatically deployed, just manually deployed. And then also the main blade, which was automatically deployed. There's your safety device, uh, your safety catch there. There's your deployment button. And out it would come. Now, like I said, I've had this knife for a number of years. It's signed out to me, so when I leave the military, guess what? i got to turn it back in. So it's really not my knife. It's a U.S. military's knife on loan by me, nothing fancy. Uh, how do I like this knife? Let's just look at it in practical terms. First kind of cool is performance. And in terms of performance, the MC1 pretty much blows. Uh, no kidding. This knife sucks. Uh, in terms of performance. And let me tell you why. Let's get back to the shroud cutter first. Um, like I said, it's not automatically deployed. That's not good. I mean, if I need to cut myself out of entanglement in a, I don't know, in a drop zone or somewhere where I've landed as a paratrooper, maybe a down pilot, and let's say I'm a pilot, I've ejected over water and I come down into water. Indeed, I have the misfortune of landing under the canopy and now I've got all kinds of shrouds maybe uh, tangle me up, uh, entangling me that might threaten to drown me. In that situation, how am I going to access this hook cutter? Do you think I'm going to have the manual dexterity under that high pressure situation with poor visibility underwater to be able to extract that? Uh, you kind of lose those fine motor skills, don't you, when you're under stress. So I think it's a, a lot of wishful thinking that we would be able to deploy this hook blade and use it effectively to cut ourselves out. That's the first criticism. Secondly, it just doesn't work. Here's a section of 550 cord, just normal 550 cord. And if I were to attempt to cut this by the, with the MC1 cutter, and I haven't tried to sharpen this at all, finally goes through. <laughs> I mean, you saw how I had to bear down on that. I'll show you a different alternative here in a second. But the hook cutter, not effective. Very difficult to deploy. Secondly, the main blade. Uh, if you press this deployment button and hold it for any length of time, you're going to get a rebound just like that. It will not lock. And that's a very old-fashioned auto design. You have to push it and let go. And it will lock, but uh, that's a very loose term when you're talking about the Camelus MC1. Hear that? It doesn't really lock up very tight. There's all kinds of movement in that pivot point. Up, down, side to side. Uh, it's pretty bad. Um, now, the deployment button, I guess that's adequate. That's fine for the intended purpose. And I understand this is a knife that dates back a long time. Before knife design really started taking off, the MC1 came out. So it's kind of a, more of a history piece. As a history piece, now getting into that second kind of cool, in other words, enjoyment, I think the MC1 has uh, some interest for a lot of people because now we're talking about historical merit of the device and the enjoyment factor of just possessing that. That's cool because it does have a lot of history. Um, the blade itself was made of high carbon, supposedly stainless steel. I have seen these rust like a lot as I was sorting through the bin to pick out the best one I could find. And guess what? This was the best one I could find, <laughs> including lockup. There were ones that were worse than this, uh, but I saw a lot with rust on it. Uh, I've never really hard used the blade, but I suspect that uh, it'd probably dull relatively easy given the quality of the steel and probably would resharpen relatively easy. It appears to be a flat ground blade, not hollow ground, so that's good. Just a traditional clip pointed blade. Functional, I mean that's no, no big deal and uh, I have not had to use this in a survival environment, so I can't really speak to how it would perform. I don't ever anticipate using it. Uh, if, I have, if I go out in a survival situation, dudes, I'm not taking my MC1. I can pretty much guarantee you that. Four ounce weight, so it's not super light, not super thin. 
um, and very limited in the tool aspect. I mean, all you got is that main clip blade and the hook cutter. Here's your lanyard. Very old-fashioned and very typical of 1970s knives. That's how you would attach a lanyard to a traditional style pocket knife. Also, no clip, of course. That kind, This model and the whole design kind of predated the, the invention and high use of the clip brought on by Spyderco. So, I think a much better option if you are a paratrooper in, in like an airborne troop, maybe a pilot, uh, in whatever service, Navy, Air Force, Marines, and you do indeed think a shroud cutter could be useful to you, which I think it is, and it's a good idea to have on your person in a bailout or a paratrooping situation, then I would highly rec recommend the Benchmade Rescue 5. This is what the military should be issuing right here. If you're worried about sh cutting shrouds, cutting lines, this is where it's at. I have a review on this. I'll annotate it sooner or later, and you can check it out. And also the Rescue 7, the whole series of Rescue hook cutters by Benchmade are superior to this one. First, it doesn't take um, some fine motor skills to deploy. You just come out and there it is. I showed you the sheath in my video of how effective it is. And it is indeed effective uh, and really easily attached to all sorts of gear. And then it just cuts through all kinds of materials like butter. Here's that 550 cord again with the Rescue 5 and it just comes on through easy and there's a video out there by Benchmade showing how easy this zips through boots belts heavy leather heavy nylon and it just rocks vastly superior device than the old camelus paratrooper knife if you're to ask me cool history but inferior now if you were <clears throat> excuse me if you wanted a knife like this I think SOG or SOG got it right with the bipolar. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm going to detach from the mothership, i.e. the tripod. Let's go take a look at that real quick. Now this is a cool knife. This is the basic concept um, that we're looking at of the MC1. It's got the hook cutter on one side and also a nice blade on the other. Um, this is a superior design, though, if you are to ask me. It is heavier, about 5.5, 5.7 ounces, I think. But it has that nice SOG, SOG clip on it that it carries deep. The blades are assisted. They're not full auto. But both the hook and the main blade are assisted. And that, to me, is a superior design. Black handled, but it wouldn't be a hard thing if the military wanted to contract with SOG and make them. I'm sure they could come in whatever color they wanted, maybe international orange, OD, uh, flat desert earth, whatever they wanted. So back to the tripod we go. And that is just a superior design to the MC1. But again, that's the first type of cool I'm talking about, performance. Um, I just think it's uh, not that great of a design. And I think the bipolar would serve much better. And if you're just, if you don't need the main blade, which I think is a wiser decision, go with the Rescue 5 or any sort of rescue. And there's other ones too. The Boker's got some rescue cutters that are interesting as well. But this one has the advantage of you don't have to deploy it. It's all ready to go. And if your hands are cold or shaking like they would be in that down pilot in the water scenario I gave you, this would still be an option. And you saw how it just zips through that 550 cord. And in fact, this is what I carry with me on my person in my military job from now on. It's so light, why not? Quick look and a little bit of history on the MC1 Camelus knife. Very collectible, maybe not so effective in its purpose. That's just me. Your mileage may vary. Thanks for tuning in. Nothing fancy. We'll see you.